Hello, my name is Carolina, this is Carolina's Closet, and today we're doing some tuft needle artwork. Come on, let's do this! Um, hi. So, today we're tuft needling, right? <laughs> I wasn't actually going to film this, but I prepped everything and I was like, maybe people would like to know how to do this. And I was doing it already, so I was like, I might, might as well just film it, right? So, tough needling is, it, it became really big, you know, in the craft world, in the craft parts of like TikTok and YouTube, like last year, I think, everyone started picking it up because it's fun, it's really nice, and I was one of the people who started picking it up. It's really fun. The problem with that for me is that I couldn't find those chunky like needles to like do the proper rugs, like the big ones that you use chunky yarn with and they feel really soft and rug-like. So I could only find these ones. Actually, I could find the chunky ones, but they were so expensive. And these ones were really cheap. You know, they're really thin. Um, and I picked this one first just to see if I was going to, you know, continue with it. And then I just bought these two. They're like, this one's thicker, this one's very thin, and I have like this kind of a range and you know I started tufting and the first thing I did was this it's a little circle I used like a, an um, embroidery hoop to do it and I love it I thought it was so nice it took me a while I think this one took me like four hours and this one as well I have another one but the nice thing about you know this and the small thin needle is that you can do a lot of detail and I love textile art with a lot of precise detail I love doing that. I do that in my knit work, like my knitwear work, and doing this in tuft is really fun as well. So, you know, once I did this, I was like, I want to do something bigger. So I got like a, a little bit of a, a bigger canvas, and I did my friend's dogs. She has two dogs, and she sent me a picture because like she had just gotten one of them and she sent me a picture and I was like, oh my god, these are so cute. Like the photo was so cute. So I just decided to turn it into like a, a tuft, like a tufted piece of art. This is how I see it. And it worked out very well. I think she liked it. And I decided to make one for another friend that I have. It's like a Shih Tzu, her name's Luna. Um, and I decided to do a, a portrait of Luna. So this is what we're doing, a dog portrait in tuft, right? Uh, I, I asked them for Luna's pictures and they sent me a bunch and it's the one I picked. She looks really cute. She looks like all fuzzied up in her little towel. And yeah, this is the picture that we are going to transform into like a rug. But it's a wall art, okay? So yeah, um, I already prepped everything last night. But I'm going to walk it through with you guys. Firstly, like how to set up the canvas. I just grab um, any... Hmm, spoilers. I just grab any kind of... Um, frame this is from like a, a canvas like the one that you used to paint on and i just took off the the thing that came with it like the proper canvas and i stapled some cotton yarn so now usually with tuft at least it's what i see online you should use something that's called monk's cloth is a fabric that has a more spaced out weave, right? So it's easier to punch through and you're not really like punching holes into the fabric. It's like the the way that the weave works makes it so it's like less aggressive to the fabric, I guess. And I think it holds well, but I usually see people doing that with the chunky needles, right? And I, so I, I just decided to not buy mom's cloth and also I just, I just have an obscene amount of, like, let me just show it to you guys. I have so much leftover kind of fabric that we use to make mock-up garments, you know, when we're testing a pattern out and stuff. So I just picked up, you know, tufting to also use out all of this the kind of cotton that I have laying around because there's nothing else to do with it. So I'm using it for my tufting, but it's not the ideal cloth that people use for it but i've been using and it's fine it holds up well right so you just staple your fabric really stiffly just really pull it um i use a gun okay. i use one of these to staple but you can use like a normal small stapler it's just harder and you're going to waste a few staples to be quite honest but you don't need to be investing in one of these if you're just starting if you just want to like test it out you know 
So yeah, I staple everything and then the next thing is to put the image in the canvas, you know, in the cloth. And for that, first of all, I just kind of changed the image to make it like what I was going to do. So for that, I get the image, I open it on Photoshop and I clear the background. I just leave it a white background and then I open it on Illustrator and I do this thing that's called image trace. Um, and I choose a bunch of colors. So for this project, I'm using 11 colors, but I usually go like between 10 or like 10 to 15, 16, I think it's enough for this size canvas. If you're using something smaller, don't go crazy in the colors, just choose less. But yeah, I do that and the program Illustrator automatically, like, you know, chooses a color, put on the, like, automatically vectors everything out and makes everything into chunks of colors right and after that i just kind of go around the image changing bits that i don't think are important because this is like a textile art it doesn't have to be precisely like everything 100 percent to like it's not a photograph it's a textile right so i go around and i just change like change the the vectors and like morph them together to make them one color and like make them like blocks of color instead of just like small little bits of different colors so once i have those blocks i just you know this is the artwork done now because i'm using um a variety of like gradient colors and they're really close to each other it's really ra it's really um difficult to trace them into the fabric because it's hard to see you know it's hard to differentiate them if they're close together like that so what I did do is I changed all of the colors. You know, I just changed all of the colors into like completely crazy colors. I just made a graph with all of the colors that I was going to use and all of the threads that I was going to use, like which color represented each yarn color, you know? And I changed that. And you can just do that by going on Illustrator. You go click one color, you click select, and you select all fill color. And then you, the program will select all of the colors with the same fill color and then you just change it to whatever color you are going to use and I just do that to make it easier for me to trace out and like see what I'm going to do right so the next thing is to put a grid and I do that because I don't have a projector or anything like that I have an iPad and this is what I use to trace so I put a graph to make everything easy now you can flip the the art, if you're using like a pencil or like an erasable um, embroidery like pen or pencil, you can flip the image because then you just trace it all and then on the side that you traced, you go in with the needle. So the final project is the back side of the project that you're doing. So when you flip it, it's the right side. So this is what people usually do because um, I don't do that. Um, just because I find it easy to trace my project when it's already um, on the canvas and because it's already stretched out so like it's already in the exact position that I'm going to do that and because of that it's easier to trace when you position your iPad here instead of putting it inside <laughs> I think it's so complicated but like the gist of it is I am not flipping my image because I'm tracing it. See, I traced it here, but I'm going to punch it here. So I'm punching the opposite side, but I, I can only do that because I traced it with like markers and they bleed through. So I can tell what the art is from the wrong side. But if you're just tracing it from the wrong side, just flip the image. I think this is such a hard way to explain it, but people usually flip the image because you flip it and then you work on the back side. I didn't do that because I'm working on the, like, I'm wrong, I'm working on the wrong side, but I, I traced it on the right side. I hope this is understandable. After stretching the, the cloth, I marked, you know, the, the graph bit, like the, the markings, and I just 
align them on my iPad with the image. So I cannot see the full image, but the graph is there, so it's fine. And I just trace that and I paint it on with markers, the markers that correspond to the color that I'm using. And this is it for the setup. to change the position of the drawing on the iPad and match up with the grid so that you can draw the rest of the drawing in the big canvas. You know, this is it and now it's all set. I have it here. It exists and it's this is now my project. So from now on, I am just going to get my needle and tuft just tuft everything now I'm just going by color and I'm just going to tuft it um, just a little how to the tufting needle it looks like this it has like um, a hole and then another hole and it, it's hollow in the inside so you usually like the needle usually come with one of those one of these um, yarn passers yarn things and you feed them through like this so you put it from the needle side in all the way to the end of the tube and then you get the yarn embroidery yarn and you pull it through and then you have to put it through this little um, hole as well and you pull it through the hole and then you push it out also for the yarn, I have two kinds of yarn. So this is like a normal embroidery yarn. And I, this is like one that just comes like this. And I'm using like three cables. So I'm like, I'm opening up the embroidery yarn. It usually comes in with like three, like with six cables. And I'm just kind of opening up and using three. So one of these is enough for, I mean, so like one of these is like double because I'm using, I'm dividing it into and using it all. I actually am not sure if I have enough yarn, but you know, let's see. Let's see what to do with it. Let's just see. This is the setup of the color of the markers related to the thread, the color of the thread. And this is me just cutting a piece of yarn. I cut a big piece of thread and start tufting with that. Um, yeah, now let's start a very long and tiring project. Just stuff, tough, tough, tough. And this is me propping the canvas over some books because the needle did start touching the table and that was not ideal. It was going to start damaging the needle and the table. So I just propped it over some books and that was enough for this project. And this is me just changing yarn. So you, you can tell like I let the thread go all the way almost to the end of the, the thread that I had cut. See, and then I just take the needle and I leave a very small tail and I cut it because I don't like leaving too big of a tail in this canvas because it's going to start getting messy. I just take off like a, another big piece of thread, thread it through the needle, leave a very, very small tail as you can tell. Tough, like punch the first hole, the, the first stitch. See, there. Hold it with my finger because otherwise it will um, just get loose i do a couple more stitches see like that and then i just continue at normal so i don't leave too big of a tail and i don't waste too much yarn because i was like i was worried that i would not have enough yarn so this is how i do things and also you know uh as i go along the project i start cutting a little bit of the loose thread so i don't have too much just like big chunks of thread um, hi, so the weekend has come and gone, and um, I have some progress. Look at this! This is the right side, this is the back side. Probably gonna put some close ups. This is how it looks, and I love it. I love that the, um, the markers are not showing through, which was um, a big worry of mine, but it's not. I love it. I have some, um, I don't love the coloring. I, she, the dog, is more of a, um, like a brown. So she goes like from dark brown to like beige. And I couldn't find these two shades of like light and slightly darker, like beige coloring, like a white with a yellow tint. 
so I had to go for this grace and this darker one is very very gray and I don't love that but that's okay like I'll just you know I, I accepted it the moment I bought the, the the thread and I knew it was not gonna match but now looking at it I really wish I had like waited a little bit and bought thread that actually match the like the dog's color that didn't happen and regardless i think it's really cute now i will do the blanket i have a couple of a couple of hours to do this now and then i'll finish at night um but i started to film because i'm actually going to try and do something here for the blanket and then for the background so basically this is the needle that i used for the whole thing and if you can tell like here there's this little thing and it keeps the needle from like not going all the way in when it goes through the fabric it goes up until here and then back so i have an understanding that if i cut this in like half or something the um, loop is going to be like longer so it's going to be a longer loop <laughs> longer loop is fun to say um so i want to try and do that for the towel slash blanket thing so it will be like a slightly above the dog so like the loops are going to be like higher, you know, and so I'm going to cut it here like half and see how that goes. Okay, so as I tucked it with like half of the blocker bead in, uh, I didn't like that. So I started tufting with the whole needle with no blocker in and I loved it. However, this uses like double the amount of thread and I didn't have enough thread for that. So I only did this technique on the edges in between like where the dog meets the blanket so that it would look 3D, it would look, look like up. And then the rest of it I did with the normal needle with the whole blocker, the whole like bead that blocks it um, and the rest of the blanket. And I also ran out of uh, thread, so I did kind of start like mixing the different colors, like where I would put the colors so that I would have enough for the whole of the blanket. Um, but yeah. Um, I would like to say that I do admire my belief in myself and my inability to estimate the amount of time that I will take in my projects. Um, obviously, I didn't finish it yesterday. Um, I did might have mentioned that um, I thought I was going to be able to finish everything, but um, I was like sure that I would finish the blanket that she's wrapped on in the image. I did not do that, obviously, because uh, I didn't have the whole day to do that. This is where I'm at. So I did the second lightest and the third lightest colors in the figure and um yeah okay it's the next day and it's actually afternoon the next day are you seeing me i hope so um i finished the dog and its towel this is luna and her little towel slash blanket and i love it i'm so happy with it i love the like three-dimensionally done stitches i don't know how to say that but i love how it looked i'm going to put like a close up here and i'm i, I consider for the longest time not doing a background just doing this and on its own but i really um intend for this to be given as a like wall piece instead of like a proper rug um so i'm going to do the back but i'm not going to finish it today because like honestly yesterday i did this like in the afternoon no i did it in the morning and then in the at night when I had time to do it and my wrist at the end of the day was killing me and I think I did like a total of like five hours of punch needling um not straight like half and half or a little bit more I think I did three hours and then two a night anyway I just know that I did um like five roughly around five hours of punch needling yesterday and my wrist was killing me I'm telling you it was so bad so I'm just I think I'm going to start the background today and finish it tomorrow or the day after probably but yeah i'm just going to like s talk to you about like the yarn that i'm using i'm using this yarn is much thicker than the embroidery yarn that i've been using as i will see if i can do like a close-up um this yarn was actually just like raw cotton um and i dyed it myself and i didn't do a good job so basically it's really patchy i don't know if you can tell it's really patchy and like i stored them like this and the bits that are like inside the next 
cone are really well pigmented but the ones down here they lost pigment which means I prepped my yarn badly and the paint like the the dye is not really stuck to it which means that I cannot do clothing with this because if I do clothing with this it will wash off in the washing machine and it might damage other clothing and I do not want this to happen so I'm using this for like art purposes and this is art I mean I do consider it art I think it's art it's art okay so yeah I'm using this thicker yarn and I'm using the thicker needle but yeah that's it um I will show you guys a close-up of me doing this and um hopefully next clip that I'm talking to you will be the end with the end result because I'm tired of it Um, hi, it is a couple of days in the future from when I last talked to you guys and my bangs are pink now because I did get um, I had my hair done because it had been a whole year since I hadn't done my roots and I was needing it. So yeah, my hair is a little shorter and more pink. Um, but I have encountered a problem. So here's where I'm at. I probably showed you guys a little more like in-depth um visual of this but this is where we're at and unfortunately i miscalculated and we're off the um shade of blue which is cool i love it i love it for myself um and um i don't have this shade to continue finishing the background I tried to do like a little rectangle so that I would just do like the the last beads on a darker shade and it kind of worked out but not really because I have like this gap this gap this gap but it will have to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with this shade is a little darker um, than this one but this Okay, so as I did that, I realized it looked really bad. The shades really didn't match. So I undid everything. And as I did everything, I realized obviously the fabric looked really damaged and it wouldn't hold more stitches onto it. So I decided to pour, put more fabric on top of the fabric that had the dog tufted into it. And this is me really struggling with the, the staple gun. <laughs> See, this is me putting more fabric on top. And this is the new thread that I'm using. I have a lot of it. It's going to be enough. This is how it looks with the, the fabric on top. And this is me just like tracing the outline through the sun. Because now I can really see the design. Because there's two layers of fabric. And this is the outline traced. And then I just tufted everything. Because now I can see like where the dog is. And not get near that. And yeah. Um... Finally, I, this took me like two weeks to do, not like two full weeks, but like, I'd say 10 days at like um, five hours per day doing it, roughly, more or less. This took me so long. I am <laughs> devastated. My wrist hurt so much. If you're using this as a tutorial, please set aside like a month to do it and do it for like one to two hours every day tops because your wrist will kill you at the end of doing it if you try to punch needle like these like very small for like more than four hours the wrist is killing me um <laughs> But yeah, I'm actually very excited with it. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I think at one point I just kind of stopped filming <laughs> because I was so frustrated. But yeah, this is what I did. Um, now thinking of it, I should have uh, put, applied some glue in this kind of area before like putting this other fabric on top to be sure that the, the layer of the dog that is the most important layer would be like very 
well glued but I didn't do that so we'll have to deal with it um so what I'm doing now is I'm just I don't know if you can tell through the light but there are a few bits of the background that are not like fully covered there's like a few spots that you can tell um that are not you know fully punched so I'm going to use the thinner needle the one that I use throughout the the dog and I'm going to go with only one layer of this yarn only on the bits that are not fully you know fully um, done and after that I will take it off the frame and I will apply glue all over it I see some people doing it with hot glue and like normal glue actually like the most common thing is I, I see people using like this specific rug glue um, and applying it with masks it's a, a strong smell I don't have that glue and I don't intend on buying it for like one off pieces so I'm just going to use like normal white glue like the glue that we use for like crafts and it's not ideal but it's what I have and I'm not going to buy like a specific glue for this but yeah um, there is a specific glue that you're supposed to use <laughs> with this, but I don't have it. So I'm just going to apply the glue all over it. I'm going to apply a lot here and let it soak through this fabric into the dong. And I think I'm going to cut a piece of fabric to like put it on the background and then fold this inwards. But I will film that and show it to you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm actually very happy with this um, now that it's over. Also, um, I would like to mention, over here, it's a little warped. I don't know if you can tell. And the reason for that is because I was seeing, you know, this kind of gaps in between the some of the loops up here. I, and I thought, so I'll just kind of punch really close together where I can, so I don't have to come back to it, you know. And here, I just really went really close with my punching. And this is what happened because I, I, I kind of like punched in the same place or like very close together and the cloth kind of expanded um, to be able to have that much loops in it. So let's not, um, you, you shouldn't punch needle that close together even if it's a small needle like the ones I'm using. Um, but yeah. Okay, so here I just cut a piece of cardboard exactly the size of the the frame and I glued it in with the exact glue, the same glue, uh, like a white BVA glue and then I put a bunch of books on top just to let it set dry. Yay! Um, I love it so much. I am so happy on how I turned out. Towards the middle of doing it, I really thought I was going to hate it because I've been doing it for so long. Um, but actually, I love it. I hope my friends like it as well because it's a gift. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to gift it like this to them. And I don't know if they want to hang it out or put, do something with it, they will do it. But yeah, this is it. Um... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way here, thank you very much. Consider giving me a like and a subscribe and comment below anything you want. If you like it, if you dislike it, like if you like the results, comment below. Um, and yeah, that's it. See you in the next video in a few days. Bye bye.